Welcome to another episode in the Aspect Foundation series, Music in Times of Crisis. Today I'm going to talk about the much loved pianist, Myra Hess, who raised the spirits of musical Londoners during the dark days of the Blitz. From September 1940 through to May 1941, London was bombed on a daily basis by the Luftwaffe and 30,000 Londoners died and a million houses were destroyed or damaged. In the late 1930s, Myra Hess was one of the world's most respected musicians and she would of course have been in very great danger had they succeeded. She soon began to worry that there was an absence of good music in London in the early days of the war. She went to her friend Sir Kenneth Clark, the director of the National Gallery, and she said to him, would he allow her to put on a concert one day a week in the, in the space of the National Gallery? Uh, he replied immediately, why only one day a week? Why not every day in the week? And so it was decided to open the gallery. It had been closed, of course, all the pictures gone. And it was decided that we should have uh, every day, five days a week, at lunchtime. And uh, I gave the first recital and thought perhaps 40 or 50 of my friends would turn up. And at 10 minutes to one, the concerts are from one to two, at 10 minutes to one, Sir Kenneth Clark came in and said, there are a thousand people on the pavement, which was terribly exciting because the BBC had announced it just the three days before. And it turned out to be the first of 1,698 concerts, the last being given after the war in April 1946. Myra Hess herself took part in 146 of the concerts and she was able to uh, bring in the finest musical talent available in Britain at the time for the other concerts and all these musicians gave their services for a nominal fee. There was of course uh, plenty of British music that was presented but Myra Hess was very keen that there's, there should be nothing nationalistic or chauvinistic about it and in fact the lion's share of the repertoire belonged to the Austro-German tradition. In the First World War, we weren't allowed to mention a German word. Songs had to be sung in English. And Schumann's Warum was called Pourquoi. <laughs> <laughs> At different times of the year, uh, audiences endured freezing cold, stifling heat, and in the worst periods of the Blitz, the performers and the audiences had to descend into the cellars of the National Gallery. Uh, the building itself was hit on a, on a number of occasions. An ever-present hazard were the unexploded bombs. So uh, during these concerts, there would often be um, a team of, of bomb disposal officers dealing with a bomb and uh, there are stories of the old bomb going off in the middle of a concert. De Mara would momentarily jump and then continue serenely and placidly to the end of the concert. prided themselves that Germany was the land of Kultur and they dismissed uh, England as they call Britain as das Land ohne Musik, the country without music. This clearly touched a raw nerve with the BBC and they decided to put together uh, a program of British music and words and this was presented, they invited Dame Mara and the distinguished actor Marius Goring uh, to present this programme which they sent out to occupied Europe under the title Britain's Reply to Goebbels from Hess and Goring. Mm -hmm. 